a lot of times, because we've all been told, eat less, move more, we spend all this time all day, right, with that restraint, right? We're using all that willpower to not eat. Right. And what happens to most people is that it is chemical in the body that on our way home, it feels like the 7-Eleven and the Dunkin' Donuts and the ice cream place are magnets, mm. right? It is chemical in the body. So it's not you. You don't suck. You're not failing. It's that you have a chemical, biological thing that's happening that is drawing you to those things. Welcome to Salad with a Side of Fries. I'm your host, Jen Trepic, talking wellness and weight loss for real life. We're here to clear up the myths, misinformation, bad science, and marketing to teach you how to eat and how to cheat. Are you ready? I'm having salad with a side of fries. Hey there. Welcome back to Salad with a Side of Fries. I'm your host and health coach, Jen Trepic, here with you every week. And this week, we're doing something a little different. So we actually did this once before. You heard here an episode where I was being interviewed on somebody else's podcast. So we did this when I was on Mind Over Macros. Recently, I had another interview where when we finished recording, I thought to myself, we need to put this one on the salad with a side of fries feed too. So here we are. Today, you're going to hear an episode where I was interviewed on the Superwoman Wellness podcast. This one is hosted by Dr. Taz. Dr. Taz is an MD, board certified in integrative medicine, holistic medicine, and pediatrics. She's also a licensed acupuncturist and certified nutritionist. I absolutely loved this conversation, and I wanted you to hear it here because I think it's a great mix of the science with the practical and the physical with the mental. So at the end also, we talked about Ozempic. So no matter what your gut response is to these pharmaceuticals, listen all the way through for this piece. I think it's interesting to hear both of our perspectives on it and potentially we're more aligned than you might think. So, okay. Now, because you're going to hear Dr. Taz do the interviewing, super quick, I'm going to tell our members what they're getting this week. So members, your recipe this week is for crispy apple and kohlrabi salad. It's seasonal and bright and delicious. Apples are coming back in season. Kohlrabi might be a new one for you. So I'm excited for you to expand your repertoire. My mom introduced me to kohlrabi years ago, and it's sort of like a very mild radish. So I think you're going to like this one. Change it up. You could add some protein or to make it a meal, or add some nuts and turn it into a snack. It is so good. And in addition to your recipe, because it's September, the third month of the quarter, it's time for your quarterly live Q&A session. And by popular demand, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. So you and me, 30 minutes. Your email this week will have all the info for you to book time on my calendar. So if this recipe sounds good to you, you're curious about the membership and want to get that one-on-one -on -one time, here's the scoop. Go to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries. For $10 a month, you get weekly recipes, a monthly article or tool, extra discounts from me and our partners, plus access to live Q&A sessions. It's a total deal, really a steal, because when you take advantage of the full offerings, you save far more than that $10 cost. It is a no-brainer way to show yourself that your health is a priority. Plus, your membership supports this podcast and this community so we can continue to bring you new episodes and experts every week. So remember, all you have to do is head over to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries, or just click the link in the show notes so you don't have to remember a whole URL. Once you're there, you click support now, enter your email and payment info, click subscribe, and you're all set. You'll get this week's recipe for the crispy apple and kohlrabi salad and your quarterly live session, just you and me, one-on-one. -on -one. So, all right, I'm turning it over to Dr. Taz of Superwoman Wellness Podcast, and I'll be back to wrap it up and tell you about this week's Nutrition Nugget. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Superwoman Wellness, where we are all determined to bring you back to your superpowered self. 
I know we've all had journeys, right? Journeys of getting healthy, whether that's mentally healthy, physically healthy, energetically healthy, but everyone's journey is unique and there truly is a lesson in each and every one of them. I am excited to have a very special guest today who's going to share her own personal journey and how it led to this amazing podcast, which is now recognized as one of the top podcasts in the nation. So please welcome Jen Trepic. I hope I'm saying that correctly, Jen. She's been described as a force of nature in the wellness space. She's been recognized as one of Podcast Magazine's 40 Under 40 and was nominated for the 2022 International Women's Podcast Award for Visionary Leadership. Amazing. She's an optimal health coach, podcaster, and a business consultant. She grew up the skinny one in a family of dieters until it went away, and so began her weight management saga that I know so many of you listening can kind of relate to. Ultimately, though, she learned through nutrition education, we're all supposed to know, but no one ever taught us, I'm right there with you, that completely ultimately changed her life, and she kicked her food issues. From then on, she set out on a mission to pay it forward and help people help themselves. She started the Salad with the Fries podcast. Based on science, but lighthearted, she talks about living life while still making our health a priority. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Dr. Taz. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, and I can feel your like force of nature, infectious energy through the (laughs) camera and sound here. So I hope everybody else listening can feel that as well. So salad with the side of fries sounds kind of like how I live my life, to be 100% honest. So I am... So curious about your journey, what happened there and kind of like guide us through, because I can tell you, you know, I've been in practice probably almost 15 years as an integrative physician and every day, you know, how do I lose weight? What's happening? And I have lots of theories about it and a lot about the environment and food and blood sugar and all that other business, but totally want your perspective. Yeah. Well, I am right there with you. Everything I teach is really about blood sugar management. And this is sort of a separate conversation, but whether we are burning fat or storing fat is a function of blood sugar. Totally. Right. But so for me, like you said in the intro, I was a dancer growing up. I was the skinny one in a family of dieters. And like, it was interesting because I ate healthful foods. And frankly, I ate healthful foods even when I started to gain weight too. (laughs) Right. Mm -hmm. And so I've been in that place of like, I think also because I was a dancer. Right. Right. I was so much more aware of my body and where my body is in space. So when it changed and I started to gain weight, my discomfort, I think, was magnified. Mm. And I know what that's like when somebody looks in the mirror and they're like, who is that? Yeah. Right? And it can happen to many of us at many different times in life, right? And the thing for me was like, when it happened, I just said, okay, well, I know what to do because I watched everybody else do this around me my whole life, right? So I did every diet under the sun, gained and lost, lived on that roller coaster. Yep. And I always had the intention of like, this is going to be the last time, right? Right. And it just never was. And ultimately, I found this curriculum that I have based my practice on. And it was really, like I said, it's the nutrition education we're all supposed to know, but nobody ever taught us. Like even what we did learn when I was growing up, it was the food pyramid. Yep. Right? Well, that was based on economics, not biology or nutrition, (laughs) but we were told that it was. And so no wonder we had a problem. And so by learning this information of really how do foods impact our body? How does our body process food? What happens when we do certain things? It explained why I had cravings in a certain moment, Mm -hmm. why all these things I had done before didn't work. And it felt like before I had been climbing Mount Everest naked and barefoot. Yeah. (laughs) And now all of a sudden it was like, I have equipment and I have the proper clothing And there's maybe, you know, a chairlift that's going to help get us to the top, right? Right. Like all of a sudden there were tools and information and it shifted every food decision from being emotional. Like, why is the croissant talking to me? Why do I suck? Why can't I just not eat it? Right. That was like the old conversation to becoming, wait, I get why that's appealing to me right now. Mm -hmm. What I really need is this. And then let me see how I feel about the croissant after. And it changed everything. And I was like, everybody deserves this information. So how'd you get there? Like, you know, I think that 
you know, even as a physician, like I'm looking at research, I'm looking at data, you know, like there's the fasting info, there's a keto info, there's a vegan info, there's the vegetarian info. And yeah, you know, now not to steal the show here, but now like, I'm like, you know what, it's about freaking blood sugar, but it's taken like so much time to get here. So talk to us about how you got yeah. there, and what your observations have been in the science that you've looked at from your perspective. And I think you're working with clients too, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. Yeah. So you have, probably have a whole, you know, library of stories too. So give us a little bit of like, you know, what, what are you discovering? What exactly. Are you finding, and what do we have wrong, honestly? Right. So it's a lot of pieces, right? I mean, I think fundamentally at first, I became an insatiable student. I read everything I could get my hands on. I went to every lecture and workshop. Like if I were a health professional, all of these things I went to would get me continuing medical education credits, but like I'm not. So, you know, but those were the rooms I was sitting in to learn from what they're saying. And then I also spoke to and learned from a lot of people on the functional side. Mm -hmm. Right. And tried to take a lot of what they were saying in conjunction with this curriculum that was already set out that had transformed my own life and put all the pieces together. And then as things would come up with my clients or with myself, I dig into that. So I ended up going down rabbit holes of behavior change Mm -hmm. and willpower and all of these other things to figure out what is going on. And I think it's really interesting because you bring up the point of, you know, all the different philosophies out there. Right. And while everybody is different, there are some things about the human body that frankly are the same. And especially if we go back to say this is proper function rather than this is what's normal because most people experience it, right? Common isn't normal. (laughs) Right. So if we evaluate all of the things coming at us, whether it's from social media or you know, the latest headline or the celebrity fad diet, right? If we evaluate all the things coming at us from this foundation of this is how the human body is supposed to work, then we can say, okay, here's how that makes sense to me. Here's how that doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. And I think the other piece that most people miss is knowing what works for you because you are your best health coach. Yeah, We all follow all of these rules Instead of following the direction of our body, we've taught ourselves out of paying attention to our own bodies. And so if we add that back into the mix, I mean, it requires relearning that, right? Mm -hmm. But when we can add that back into the mix and say, I hear that that might work for that person, but what I know about me is I feel best when I do this. So I'm glad that that's working for, you know, Hollywood. For me, I'm going to keep going here. I love that because I think so many people just are like, well, my friend did this or so-and-so did totally. that and it worked for them. So why can't, you know, I do it? And it really is so much, you know, there's a quote, you know, that I love using. It's like all healing is ultimately self-healing. It's very much about understanding you. And I tell patients this, like, I really want you to get the formula for you in this exam room or through this experience. You know, it's not everybody needs to do this, you know, so And I can appreciate everybody wants the answer. Everybody wants the shortcut. I promise you what I'm sharing with you, what Dr. Tass is sharing with you is the shortcut. (laughs) Yep, that's so true. Such a good point. And by the way, the shortcut is consistency. Mm -hmm. The shortcut is not like shiny object syndrome of following a new thing every day, depending on what's coming at us, right? It's just little things all the time. I always say small steps in the same direction lead to huge distance over time. I love that. I love that. Well, what is some of your, you know, as you like are going down these rabbit holes, what are some of the common things, maybe the universal truth, so to speak, that you're seeing with clients as they're trying to lose weight, whether that is uh, common behaviors that we are engaging in that are not working for us, And then also common things that we could all do to shift things in the right direction. Yeah. I think one of the most common things is perfectionism, black and white thinking, all or nothing, right? And that goes with our food. It goes with our activity. It goes with every single thing, our sleep, our stress. We live in this world of thinking we're on or we're off, right? So I don't know, in my elementary school classroom, yeah, 
above the chalkboard, they used to have the like alphabet, right? From left right. to right oh, yeah. across the top, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I think of it like this. For most people right now, if you have that alphabet laid out left to right, your pendulum is swinging A to Z, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's the scale, whether it's your food choices, your pendulum is swinging A to Z. By the way, a pendulum can never hang straight down either. Mm -hmm. Our objective is to have that pendulum swinging in the middle, back and forth all the time from like L to O, yep. somewhere in that middle range. Yeah. All the time we bob and weave, we do what we can, when we can, with what we have available, and we keep moving forward. You know, it's with our exercise, it's not like we can be like, oh, no, I don't have to work out today. I went to recess once in seventh grade. Right. Right. I guess they don't even have recess in seventh grade, second grade. Let's try second grade. Right. Like right. I went to recess once. I'm good. Like that's not how it works. And we know that. Mm -hmm. Right. Also on the activity front, I'm sure you've heard, right. Sitting is the new smoking. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Right. So we say that because sitting all day is not human. Right. Our bodies were not designed to sit all day. You know what else is not human? Sitting all day and going berserk for one hour. Mm, that's, what I is human about that all the time. I know right? yes. <laughs> what is human is a few minutes here and a few minutes there and a couple minutes over there. Mm -hmm. It is cumulative. We have this idea that like, if it's not enough, if it's not hard enough, it doesn't make us sweat enough. It doesn't count. Right. And we're leading ourselves astray. And the same thing happens with our food choices, right? If it's not textbook, it doesn't count. And I have to start over. Right. Right. Oh, I went on vacation. I have to start over stop starting over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just keep going. You know, I use the analogy, like if you went to the grocery store and you were bought some eggs and you're on your way home and one of the eggs breaks. Yeah. You're like, ah, right. Mm -hmm. What do you do with the other 11 eggs? You still use them. Yeah. yeah. And not only that, you like protect them. Right. You make sure that you don't break right. another one. Right. When we enter the land of the efforts, as I fondly call it, <laughs> right. It's like taking the other 11 eggs and dumping them on the ground. Right. Right. Rather, we can say, okay, I have a barbecue tonight. I have a holiday. All right. Well, what are the other 11 eggs that we can protect? Maybe I have a solid breakfast. I get some activity in. I sleep well. I meditate. I breathe. Right. All of the other 11 eggs that we can do in a day that support our health. Because right. we didn't get here from one broken egg. Right. I love that. I, perfectionism is real. I feel like people are on, you're like you said, they're on or they're off. And so if we can yeah. change that mindset, how do you proactively think though? And how do you change? Because some people will do that, but they still have like a huge problem with nighttime eating. My husband complains about this all the time because I don't know what happens <laughs> to me at night. Like when I'm on vacation, this doesn't happen. Or, you know, first he was like kind of blaming the family. He's like, maybe it's you guys. I'm like, no, 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 it's your stress. You know? <laughs> So anyhow, but uh, he was joking. But, you know, again, what, like there's the night eater, there is yep. the big dinner eater, you know, there's like the, I'm not going to eat in the morning, but, you know, I pay for it later eater. Like, you know, what are some things that, you know, are like really red flags for you're doing, you know, you're yeah. doing this wrong if you're trying to lose weight? Yes. Oh. Okay, so first of all, this could be a whole thing onto itself, like totally I'm barely yeah. going to be able to scratch yeah. the surface. <laughs> The biggest thing is that people look at everything in isolation. Mm -hmm. Nothing in the body exists in isolation and nothing in your life exists in isolation. So the challenge with nighttime eating actually is not about nighttime eating. Oftentimes, our challenge with nighttime eating is a function of what is happening first thing in the morning, right? Yeah. Are, we getting <laughs> so, right? I know. Are we getting fuel, quality fuel, within an hour to 90 minutes of waking up? Mm-hmm. Are we moving our body during the day? Are we eating nutrition throughout the day? A lot of times, because we've all been told, eat less, move more, we spend all this time all day, right, with that restraint, Yep. right? We're using all that willpower, right, to not eat. And willpower is like a whole other can of worms, yeah. but it's a finite resource if we don't replenish it. Right. And what happens to most people is that it is chemical in the body that on our way home, it feels like the 7-Eleven and the Dunkin' Donuts and the ice cream place are magnets, mm. right? It is chemical in the body. So it's not you. You don't suck. You're not failing. It's that you have a chemical biological thing that's happening mm -hmm. 
that is drawing you to those things. So we don't have to rely on willpower. If we focus on switching something up earlier, that moment becomes infinitely easier. Yeah. Hey friends, jumping in here, it's Jen again. I wanted to give you a quick update. So if you're a fan of Salad with the Side of Fries podcast and looking for how you can support us, we've got you covered with our awesome merchandise. From things you wear like a V-neck tee and a crew neck, leggings and joggers, to things that support your health goals, like a variety of drink tumblers, a yoga mat, a tote bag, perfect for your next grocery run. It's all great gear to show off your love for the podcast, but more importantly, to share if you are hashtag team salad or hashtag team fries. So just head over to our website, a salad with a side of fries.com slash merch, browse the full collection. I will tell you, we have already had a couple items out of stock, some of those things not coming back. So jump on it before what you want is gone. And we are going to have a fall merch drop with some long sleeve shirts and seasonal items. So make sure if there's something there that you like, grab it before it's gone. Snag the official salad with a side of fries mug, perfect for sipping your favorite brew while enjoying the latest episode. Or go with the portable Bluetooth speaker or the earbud case, perfect accessories for any podcast fan. So you can take a piece of the podcast with you wherever you go. Maybe these are your best anchors to remind yourself of your commitment to your health. So simply text the word FRIES, F-R-I-E-S, to 844-947-4846. You'll receive the link right to your phone. Check out all the Salad with a Side of Fries merch. Your purchase supports all the work that we do here, shows your pride, and perhaps it sparks a conversation for you to pay it forward, inspiring somebody else to change their health too. So again, you're texting the word FRIES, F-R-I-E-S, to 844-947-4846. This is a toll-free number. Standard text and data rates may apply. Okay, back to Dr. Taz. When you have suppressed, you know, your food intake all day long, and then you're coming home for dinner and you have, first of all, a cortisol letdown, right? Because you can, whatever you've dealt with all day, you know, all throughout the day. So there's the hormone cortisol, there's leptin, which you've sort of tried to suppress like all day long, but that's your, you know, satiety hormone. So that's flaring. You know, there's ghrelin, that's another hormone that's involved. Like all these biological molecules are involved in driving that behavior, you know? Exactly. So, you know, I don't know what your advice is, but mine is often like eat consistently, you know, eat every three to four hours, you know, like have breakfast, have lunch, have let, I think that three o'clock something is really important because it prevents overeating at seven, eight, nine o'clock, you know, so have those benchmarks as times where you do allow yourself to eat. I don't know. What Absolutely. Yeah, no, totally. And I think the other thing is what you eat is as critical as eating at all. Correct. Yeah. Right. And I often say it's not what to eat, it's how to eat, but mm-hmm. this is a piece of it, right? It's how we're putting that plate together. That's going to make that six, seven o'clock situation easier or more challenging. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I always remind people too is you were talking about leptin and ghrelin. Yeah. Yeah. The same way that somebody can become insulin resistant, Mm -hmm. right? We all know that to be diabetes, right? We can become resistant to leptin and ghrelin. So it's chemical that you don't feel hungry. And then it's chemical that once you start eating, you can't stop. The good news is that's not permanent, (laughs) Right? right? We can do a lot. We just have to recognize that the missing piece is not a moral failing. The missing piece is biochemical, Mm -hmm. right? So I agree with you. We want first food, like within an hour to 90 minutes of waking up. From there, food, and it depends how much we have, okay? So a meal is probably going to last us around four to like five, five and a half hours, Mm -hmm. depending on how much we have. Mm -hmm. A snack is going to last us like, two hours, one to two hours, depending on how much we have. So if what you eat, let's say you wake up at seven, eight, eight 30, you're having two eggs. That's more of a snack, which means that it is chemical that you are hungry again around 10 ish, 10 30. We need to fuel again, 
because that is appropriate based on the amount of food that we have. Most of the time people go, nope, I shouldn't eat again. It's not lunchtime. I'm just going to have more coffee, (laughs) right? Or I'm going to have something else. And we try to push it. So if we look at how much we're having and then saying, okay, here's about when I'm probably going to need to fuel again and keeping an eye on that, right? Maybe like 10, 10, 30, you have another sort of snack size thing that puts us to lunch midday. If that's going to last us four to five hours, we certainly need that snack at about, you know, four or five o'clock before yeah. we head home for dinner at seven. Yeah. Right. And that makes total sense. The thing that I say to everybody about, you know, how you build your plate, protein and fiber at every meal makes your moving fat. No big deal. Oh, I love that. Okay. Right. Protein and fiber at every meal makes your moving fat. No big deal. Protein is clean, lean protein. Yeah. I don't care what it is. Animal plant, something we've never discovered. It, Clean, lean protein. Yeah. Fiber is vegetables and sometimes fruit. If we build our plate starting from there, you're going to be fine. Yeah. Right? We want to think of starches and grains and some of the other things more like a condiment right. than a food group or even a side dish, right? Something to add some flavor and texture and a little interest. Mm-hmm. And we're still able to have all those things. The other thing that one day I'll figure out how to get into that sentence that we do want to have a few times throughout the day is some quality fat. Yeah. Right. So a serving avocado is actually half the avocado. Everybody says to me, oh, I had like a sliver of an eighth of a quarter of an avocado. And I'm like, eat the avocado. Like it's going to help us feel satisfied. It's going to give us what we need. So as long as we're eating protein, fiber, quality fat, everything else is going to fall into place right? Fueling regularly based on how much we have. So what's your, so, I mean, I'm in complete alignment with this and, you know, I was even on the fasting bandwagon for a little bit until my own metabolism kind of tanked because of it. But talk to me about what you think about fasting, you know, whether it's a 12, 14, 16, 24 hour fast, what your thoughts are around that. So I want to say fundamentally, the average human living on this planet does not get all of the nutrition that their body needs given 24 hours to eat. Mm -hmm. How we think we're going to do that in eight, I don't know. Yeah, Because at 24, we can't do it, right? right? So so that aside, (laughs) I like fasting better for men. Yep. A lot of the research works on young men. Yep. Right. Women's hormones are on a completely different cycle that is actually daily, not like it is for men, which can be, you know, a couple phases of life, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Our hormones are different every single every day. day. Agree. So given that, we need to be supporting that in a very different way. Most research, by the way, is on men in mm-hmm. general across the mm-hmm. board. So even dosing of pharmaceuticals is based on male bodies. So right. grain of salt on all of that. Right. Having said that, the kind of fasting that I really like is after dinner to breakfast. Yes. Thank you. Your fasting time needs to be while you sleep. It's a couple hours before bed to about an hour, 90 minutes after waking up. Yep. If you expect your body to function and thrive without fuel, you are setting yourself up to store fat, to deteriorate metabolically. It is not the way to health. It might make the number and the scale go down. I see a lot of people who use it as a tool to essentially just cut calories. Right. But the reality is the body doesn't work by calories in, calories out. And you don't need a degree to know that because you know that 100 calories of cucumber is going to be different to your body than 100 calories of Skittles. Right. And also, like, as you do the (laughs) calories in, calories out game, you end up lowering your metabolic rate. So you'll see short-term results, but long-term failure, which is exactly, you know, what I even noticed when, you know, four or five years ago when fasting was a big thing. So I'm curious, you mentioned, you know, blood sugar and you mentioned blood sugar stability and all those other things, you know, what, so protein, fiber, and fat, having those at every meal, ideally every snack as well. Are there other things that really impact whether you're going to, you started the podcast with this, which I thought was so great, whether you're going to store fat or burn fat, what are things that lead to fat storage behaviors, foods, and what are things that lead to burning fat? Excellent. So storing fat first, when our blood sugar is too high, 
and when our blood sugar is too low. So let's think about it in this way. Think of like a grocery store checkout, right? The food's coming down the conveyor belt. The cashier rings it up, passes it to the bagger. The bagger puts things in a bag. When the conveyor belt is coming at a nice, even pace, all the things that go in the freezer are together. All the things that go in the refrigerator are together. The eggs are protected, right? We don't have, you know, canned goods on top of your green peppers, right? Things are organized. The body works the same way. When food and fuel is coming at a nice, even pace, we produce insulin. Insulin carries all that fuel to our muscles and our cells to be used as energy, right? When that conveyor belt speeds up, all of a sudden it's coming so fast. The cashier is just ringing things up. The bagger is throwing things in a bag. Your body does the same thing. Mm -hmm. When we speed up that conveyor belt because we've eaten high glycemic foods or we've eaten too much, it's like flipping a switch, speeding up the conveyor belt. Our body overproduces insulin. Our muscles and our cells can only use so much fuel at a time and then they close, but our fat cells go, I'll take it, right? Our fat cells never close because our fat cells are about survival. And so fat is fuel stored to be used later, right? right? So all of the extra fuel and the extra insulin gets stored as fat. So in real life, what that looks like is we sit down at the table, we start with the bread. Mm -hmm. We ordered this textbook right? If textbook was a thing, like steamed fish and vegetables. We're like, oh, I'm queen, right? So we order (laughs) steamed fish and vegetables, but we start with the bread, right? Our steamed fish and vegetables is going to be stored as fat because the bread flipped the switch on that conveyor belt. Uh, hmm. So it's why we want to start with protein and vegetables and then have a little bit of the bread or the starches or the grains or the higher glycemic choices. They don't impact us the same way interesting. because we sort of blunt the impact, right? So that's sort of the piece of when our blood sugar is too high. When our blood sugar is too low, our body in its infinite caveman wisdom does not know that you have a refrigerator full of food that you are choosing not to eat. Your body thinks it is a time of famine. Mm -hmm. And it says, "Uh uh-uh, you're not going to kill me. I survive, (laughs) right? And so every time it gets fuel, it stores it as fat to use it later because it thinks it's going to die. Wow, because I have been putting glucose monitors on a lot of my patients. Yep. And many of them are going, like they're not technically diabetic high, which is what I'm trying to explain that that number is still not okay. We don't want to get to the diabetic high number. Your numbers are still too high, but they're dropping down to the 40s and 50s after yep. alcohol towards the evening, you know, so they are in this hypometabolic state, essentially, yep. you know, so exactly. that's, that's what's happening with them. But. And the next thing you eat, you're going to store as fat because your body thinks it's a time of famine and it just wants to survive. Right. right. We don't want to live in this world of crazy highs and crazy lows. Yeah. Even Steven in the middle, right in that range. Now within that range, we're going up and down. But in this middle range, when we are consistent with that, we're never putting our body into a phase of storing fat. Right. Right. The other thing, and I always say like, this isn't magic, it's science. But I do think the piece that's a little bit magical is that when we're consistent in that, two things can happen. One, our body can say, wait a minute, I don't need all this fat I've been holding on to. Right. And it will release its fat stores. And two it can better handle the occasional spike. So right now you think, oh, I can't do ice cream. Mm -hmm. goes right to my hips, right? Mm -hmm. I promise you, if we're consistent, we can have the occasional ice cream and it doesn't impact us the same way as it does right now because our body has the resilience to handle the occasional spike. Our body cannot handle a constant roller coaster. So interesting. So the order of eating should be protein, vegetables, and then the carbs or the higher lysemic carbs and dessert after. Correct? Yeah. And some okay. people, yeah, some people will say, you know, the vegetables before the protein. Right. I'm a big fan of realistic. Like, right. I don't care. One of the two, both, whatever. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be like all of this thing on your plate and then all of that thing on your plate. If we keep the portions in better proportions, Mm -hmm. (laughs) right? Mm -hmm. If we think about those grains and starches, the higher glycemic foods as a condiment, we're going to be fine. Yeah. 
So think of like building the plate. If the higher glycemic foods are the color red yep. and the lower glycemic foods are the color white, we put them together. What do we get? Pink. Yeah. <laughs> not as red as red, not as white as white. Right. Okay. Well, what if we have more of the protein and vegetables, the white color, and less of the red color? Oh, well, we get a lighter pink. Mm -hmm. Closer to white than it is to red now. Right. Oh, well, now we're getting somewhere and we yeah. can enjoy those things. So also, life hack, have your dessert right after dinner. Don't wait and then sugar bomb your body later. Mm -hmm. Have that dessert with the meal. Not only will you probably eat less because you've right. had that food, right. but it's going to go into our system with these other things that are offering nutrition and slowing down the release of fuel into our body than right. if we had it by itself. Right. I love it. So many great hacks. All right. We are running on time, believe it or not. We could talk about this probably all day. I know. I know. So for everybody listening, I mean, wait, I want to ask more questions. I've got to ask this question. What do you think yeah. of Ozempic, semi-glutide, oh. Moderna, Wegovy? Take it away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fundamentally, the mechanisms of action in the body we can do with better, more sustainable options. Mm -hmm. Full stop. Right now, the research shows that the number and the scale goes down. The number and the research does not show improved health. Right. It does not show that what we are removing from the body is fat. Because odds are when we do things like this, what we're losing is water, muscle, and bone. Mm. Losing those things does not equate to health. So please, please divorce the scale. Understand that the number and the scale is not our best indicator of health outcomes. There are so many things I want to say. My other big pet peeve about it is not only can you not come off of it. I know somebody who is taking it. He said just as an experiment, he went off of it. Cravings were back and worse within mm -hmm. six days. We don't know what's going to happen long term with any of these people. What we do know is that you can't come off of it. Right. And my biggest pet peeve of all is that the people who are taking it are lying about it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is such a tragic disservice to all humans to be taking something like this, not tell people about it, and have the public think that this celebrity weight loss is what they're supposed to be aiming for without a medical intervention. Right. You can't use something like, I mean, as a physician, I feel like I write that prescription when I've got someone with a significant amount of yes. weight to lose, right? Over 40, 50 pounds or so. Right. And, and it can be life-saving. For right. some people, it right. is life-saving and right. life-altering. You know, it especially if we're in a place of we can't get off the couch. We need right. something to get us over a hump. Right. And and something to give a little bit of hope too, right? Because yes. for some of those people. The mountain seems so high to climb that like it just it's a state of desperation. But I do it with the plan to come off of it and to yeah. continually assess gut health, hormones, inflammation, body right. fat, muscle mass, right? Right. Because those exactly. are some of the key indicators of health, you know, versus <laughs> the number on the scale. Right. You know. So and the thing too is you know, for the people where it is life altering and life saving, right? It's playing a critical role, right? To your point, we have to still learn how to go in and live the rest of our lives. Correct, right. It is infinitely more challenging to learn how to handle a craving and what helps us calm cravings and what helps us prevent cravings when they don't exist. Yeah. So if you think that you're going to, you know, do this for a period of time and go off of it and it's going to be this magic bullet and you're no longer going to have to deal with these things. Right. It's not that. We're most likely not learning a lot of those life skills. Right. While we're on it because we aren't experiencing it. Right. I love it. I mean, you know, weight is such an interesting thing. I think we're so caught up with weight being a sign of success, a sign of power. Ugh you know, a door opener and there's just all this emotional stuff caught up with weight and gaining weight. But ultimately we need to understand it's about our health and yes. health is not just about the number on the scale. And I think I've been screaming, it's not calories in calories out. You've been talking about that as well. 
But we are going to continue to push this conversation forward because we are coming up against powerful drugs and powerful pharmaceuticals that really promise quick results and make the whole journey seem so simple and so easy with, again, like everything else, like junk food, like our lifestyles in general, quick and easy does not equal success. Never has and never will. And no matter what is offered, it still won't do that. So yeah, we'll have to continue to talk about this and push it forward. We will. I'm sure everyone wants to like connect with you. Tell us about your podcast. Tell us about where they can find you, all that other good stuff. Absolutely. So podcast is salad with a side of fries. Search for it. You'll find us. All social media. I am at Jen Trepek, J-E-N-N-T-R-E-P-E-C-K. And please, please send a message. Like, I love hearing from you. What was new? What did you agree with or disagree with? Like, I want to talk about it with you. And happy to offer all of your listeners to a complimentary discovery call. You know, let's chat. What's up with you? Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Jen. This has been so much fun. And we'll probably do another episode because I don't think this topic is going away anytime soon. So Thank you so much. And for everybody else watching and listening to this episode of Superwoman Wellness, don't forget to rate and review it and share it with your friends. I will see you guys next time. Woohoo! There it was. We did it. And, you know, I think as I listen to this again and reflect on these episodes, I'm always curious to hear your thoughts. So please let me know what stuck with you. Know that I am always here for you. And Even though you heard me as the interviewee, you are, of course, still getting a nutrition nugget. So on Friday, we're talking about milestones. Now, if you're listening the day this goes live, my 40th birthday is tomorrow. So September 14th, 2023, I turn 40. And leading up to this, when people hear I'm turning 40, they ask how I feel about it. And that's gotten me thinking about milestones. So we're going to talk about it on Friday in this week's Nutrition Nugget. So wherever you're listening right now, hit the plus sign or the follow button, and then your app will remind you when the new episode or bonus episode is available for you. And also, by the way, if you're listening on Spotify, have you noticed the Q&A feature? So we can interact with each other on there too, if you feel so inclined. So I'll be checking that. And with that, friends, as always, I'm your host and health coach, Jen Trepic. Connect with me on Instagram or all social media. I am at Jen Trepic, J-E-N-N-T-R-E-P-E-C-K. Website is a salad with a side of fries.com. You'll find the merch on the website. You can also send a message on the website or on social media. Send a message so that you can share your ideas, your takeaways, your questions. This is also the easiest way to learn more about working with me as your health coach this fall. My next group program is starting this fall in just a couple weeks. It's filling up fast, but be sure to reach out if this is interesting to you. And if you're not quite ready for that, join the membership by going to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries, or just click the link in the show notes. The membership supports this podcast and this community, but most importantly, it truly supports your health. You'll get this week's recipe for the crispy apple and kohlrabi salad and your quarterly live session, which is a one-on-one, just you and me for 30 minutes. Until next week, remember, the true shortcut is consistency. I'm here to support you along the way, and I promise you got this. Well, friends, that's it for today's episode of Salad with a Side of Fries. Congratulations for making yourself and your health a priority. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to click subscribe or follow on your favorite podcast platform. Share us with a friend and we'll be back next week. Always remember, you deserve it and you are worth it. Happy healthy.